This is the story of a Canadian scientist who converted to Islam after conducting deep research to find flaws and contradictions in the Holy Quran. In fact, we Muslims believe that the Quran is the holy book that Allah revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace of Allah be upon him, as a blessing and guide for mankind. Ask anyone who follows the teachings of the Quran. They experience peace, security, and happiness in this world, and so it will be in the hereafter. However, some people do not believe in the authenticity of the Quran and want to find errors in it to prove that this book is not from God. This was the case for Dr. Gary Miller, a Canadian professor and researcher on religions. He was a Christian missionary for 15 years. As a missionary, he was concerned about the rapid growth of Islam in the West that continues up to now. Willing to stop that, he decided to study the Quran, focusing on finding errors and contradictions that may be in the Quran. Like all other books, he believed that the Quran might also have weaknesses. Dr. Miller was convinced that if he managed to list a number of errors from the verses of the Quran, he would have powerful arguments to convince people not to embrace Islam. He also wanted to use these verses to call on Muslims to abandon Islam. But after extensive research, he was overwhelmed by the result, as you will see in a moment. Here's one of the things that astonished him. Instead of finding chapters in the Quran where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, glorifies himself, he found an entire chapter called Maryam, containing information about Mary, like he had never read it in any other book, including the Bible. Likewise, he noticed that the name of Isa bin Maryam, or Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was mentioned more than 20 times in the Quran, while the name of Prophet Muhammad, peace of Allah be upon him, was only mentioned four or five times. Why would Muhammad invent a book in which he glorifies people who lived centuries before him rather than glorifying himself and his beloved ones? Professor Miller wondered. But he didn't stop there. He continued to read the Quran thoroughly and more carefully than before, hoping to find errors. But suddenly, he came across an extraordinary verse that completely changed his view of the Quran and Islam in general. It is the verse number 82 of Surah An-Nisa in which Allah says, Do they not then reflect on the Quran? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, they would have certainly found in it many inconsistencies. <laughs> Professor Miller was astonished to see that the Quran invites anyone who wishes to search for errors in it. Gary Miller said that he had never seen or heard of an author who writes a book and then declares that his book contains no errors. Yet this is the case for the Quran. The Holy Quran declares that it perfect and then it challenges anyone who has doubts to find a single error in it. Allah says, And if you are in doubt about what we have revealed to our servant, then produce a surah like it, and call your helpers other than Allah if what you say is true. In fact, in this verse Allah invites those who say the Quran is not divine to produce a single chapter, since it is known that some of the shortest chapters of the Quran consist of only a few short sentences, this challenge constitutes a definitive proof of the inability of human beings to imitate the Quran. Who among modern researchers and writers is capable of taking up this challenge and producing one chapter similar to the Quran in order to prove that the Quran is not from God? Who can do that? Of course, no one is capable of doing that. Let us not forget that this challenge was posed to a people whose leaders were threatened by the devastating attacks of the Quran. The leaders of the Quraysh tribe, including Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, and many others, considered the Quran as a great threat to their lives, their wealth, their customs, their ancestors, as well as their entire social position. If it had been possible for these leaders to respond to this challenge from the Quran, given their power and wealth, they would have taken it up immediately with the unwavering help of the masters of the Arabic language who were at their side. Thus, they would have invalidated the claim of the Quran and won an eternal victory, but they were unable to produce not one chapter but a single verse like the Quran. So, that Quran verse made Dr. Miller reflect deeper on the Quran. Another thing that struck him was that the noble Quran does not mention the sad events in the personal life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, such as the death of his beloved wife Khadijah, the death of his daughters and his sons, and so on. Interestingly, the verses that were revealed to comment on some difficult times proclaimed victory, while those revealed at the time of victory warned against arrogance and called for greater sacrifice and effort. So, if someone wrote their own autobiography, wouldn't they glorify their victories and justify their defeats? Why does the Quran do the opposite? 
isn't it because it is not from man? In his book, The Amazing Quran, written after his conversion to Islam, Dr. Miller commented on verse number 49 of Surah Hud, which says, This is one of the stories of the unseen, which we reveal to you, O Prophet. Neither you nor your people knew it before this. Dr. Miller said, I have never seen another book using this kind of style, where the author gives a piece of information to the reader and then tells them that it is new information that no one has ever known it before. In fact, this is truly a unique challenge because no one, neither among the inhabitants of Mecca at the time of the Prophet or anywhere else in the world, even pretending, has ever said that they knew it before. There has never been a single scholar in the world who has proven that the information contained in the Quran was known before its revelation. In one of his conferences, Dr. Miller gave the example of verse 30 of Surah Anbiya, which talks about what is known today as the Big Bang Theory. This verse states that the universe came into existence as a result of a great explosion, which ultimately created the sky and the celestial bodies. How could Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a man without scientific training, having lived in the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century, know this scientific fact, which was only discovered by modern science several centuries after his death, Dr. Miller asked himself. It was after making these astonishing discoveries while studying the Quran that Professor Miller converted to Islam in 1978 and changed his name to Abdul Ahad, which means the servant of the unique God, Allah. He worked for a few years at university in Saudi Arabia, then decided to dedicate his life to Dawah through television programs and public lectures to help other people discover the light of Islam and follow it. He organized many conferences and wrote numerous books on the Quran and Islam in general. One of his most famous books is The Amazing Quran, in which he gave irrefutable proof that the Quran is the word of God. In this book, he talked about many amazing discoveries he made through his research on the Holy Quran. May God bless and make it easy to anyone searching for the truth without allowing their prejudices prevent them from achieving it. May Allah bless you too for the time you spent on this interesting story. Assalamu alaikum.